Trajan crank seal in the driveway. This is a Kawasaki, 17 horsepower. Eliminator Performance, their channel, did one of these, but they uh, changed out the whole gasket set. So they pulled the engine off, which is awesome, which is awesome, because, yeah, uh, I don't have to do that, to that just to change crank seal that's been leaking, but, yeah, if you're doing a whole gasket set, head gasket, um, crankcase gasket, crank seal, all that stuff, yeah, you need to pull a whole engine. So, like I said, this is a FC540V FS15 Kawasaki 17 horse. First thing you do is drain the oil. Warm it up so it drains quicker. Which I did that. Pull the fuel, uh, oil filter off. Then you're going to jack it up with the jack. Put some jack stands underneath it. Make sure you have those jack stands steady. Make sure you have the jack stands underneath it and not working under a jack. All right, I learned this trick from uh, Jake at Eliminator Performance. Once you get the bolt loosened up on the uh, uh, PTO pulley, take an air hammer if you got one, hit that bolt, and this thing should come loose because these don't come off very easily anymore. I want to break. Okay, so before you go trying to pound that thing off, look for this bracket. This bracket connects to the side, the left side of your uh, frame, and it'll be hooked in to your uh, PTO clutch at the top. So you go start pounding that thing, trying to get it off or whatever. Look for this bracket first because I, I didn't do that, and uh, yeah, you learn something new every day, right? I'm always learning. So I said, what's holding this thing up? There's no way. And then I saw this bracket covered in oil. So it was like damn near invisible underneath there. And uh, I traced it to the side and there it was. I unbolt that, thing fell right off. So something to look for. Now you're gonna need to loosen this PTO drive belt to get the pulley off. That's the crank pulley that's above the clutch the PTO clutch, to get that off, you're going to need to loosen this drive belt. So you're going to want to take a flathead screwdriver. Now, you can take that top pulley off which is your crank pulley. After you get your crankshaft pulley off, you can see the belt, drive belt, and you can see the idler pulley up here, and you can got clear access to the crank seal. Also, when you pull this crankshaft pulley off, it's got a key. Some have inter or keys welded into the inside of the pulley. This one had a separate key, so remember that when you put it back on. Now we got clear access to the crank seal. So what I'm going to do, and it's too cold out here to pressure wash all this. Uh, it's about 30, 30 degrees right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, some people like to take a pick, and this is small enough where I might try that. You can try to take a sharp, like a dental pick, and try to pick around the inside, pull it out. Or what I've done before on these, but as a bigger seals, I'll take a wood screw, and I will 
screw it in a little bit on each side. And we'll take a claw hammer and start trying to pry it out with the claw hammer. We'll see. All right, so you got a couple methods here. You got the screw method, where you screw in two of these seals and yank it out with the claw hammer, or you got the pick method. Now you gotta have some decent picks or else they'll just bend them. I'm gonna try these because it's a small seal. We'll see what happens here. Let's get that belt off the back a little bit. Inspect the belt down here. See if you got any cracks. I mean, it's a little worn. There is no cracks visible. And inspect your idler pulley. There's bushings inside there that wear out. Make sure it's not locked up. Make sure the bearing is good. Alright, old fashioned method. Screwing claw. get on the inner edge as far out as you can. There we go. So I got the screw in the seal. Screws in the seal. I'm gonna take a claw hammer and I'm going to pry on that real quick. Try to get that seal out. It is. Bam. So that seems to be the best way for me. So the old school wood screw and uh, claw hammer works wonders. So now we're going to get a towel, rag, clean all this up. Get it nice and shiny. And I'll tell you, show you how to, what to do with the uh, new seal. All right, so this is the seal we're going to use, part number M124523. And what we're going to do, this is just my preference, you don't have to do this, but I put some gasket maker around the outside, and I put anisease, or, or you can use oil, on the inside. And I've never had a problem, at least with a couple that I've done. Gasket maker outside, and it sees or oil on the inside. Make it slide in easier, but it'll stay stand tough on the outside against that crankcase, and you got less of a chance of a leak for another seal. All right, let's do it. So, yeah. All right, so here's what we need. So first of all, you're gonna need a pipe, whether it's PVC or galvanized. I had this laying around from an old job. And guess what? It fits perfectly. It's the same size as the seal. That's what you need. It'll go over the crankshaft and same size as the seal. That way you can push it in evenly. Then I got this old cup that goes on a flywheel. Bolts onto an old flywheel I use. I'll put that on the end so I can hammer it on it this mallet. Hammer that seal up nice and evenly. I'm going to use some oil since I'm out of anisees. So for the inside, oil or anisees on the inside. And then I'm going to use anaerobic gasket maker. This is what I use on rebuilding engines or for uh, crankcase gaskets if they need it or whatever. Anaerobic gasket maker. Awesome. Perfect. And that will go on the outside. That way you make a good seal. You're not going to get a blown seal or leak. Not a lot though. So that's the plan. Let's get it done. Alright, so let's move this belt out of the way. Okay. Make sure the inside of this is clean. You don't want any debris in between the seal and 
Where the seal seats on the crankcase. I always like to use something like a flathead or something with the rag and get in there. Make sure the flat part of the seal is down. Okay, once you get it up there, now you can take your pipe, PVC, whatever you got. Remember not to put it in too far, not too far. I can start tapping. So as you can see, I'm just tapping away with the mallet, trying to make that seal go in as uh, even as possible on all sides. Um, try not to make it cockeyed and take your time. Keep looking. Don't go too deep. A millimeter recess is all you want, and you'll be fine. There we go. Looks good. That looks good. Just a lot of oil down here. And uh, then you're going to put some anises or whatever you got. I don't have any right now. But I'll put some... Uh, Maybe some uh, white lithium grease or something on here. Put your key in with your pulley, your crank pulley. Then you just install your clutch, your PTO clutch after that. Put your belt on, put your spring on. Make sure to put your bolt in, tighten that down, torque it to where it needs to go. Put that bracket in that holds the clutch that I showed you. Drop her down, put some uh, Put a new filter on it, throw some oil in the beast, test her out. I'm going to have to wipe a lot of this up, that way I know if it's leaking or not. You can't tell if it's already covered in oil. So, we'll get her all put back together and test her out. You can see how it's recessed just a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to film myself putting this all back together because uh, it's just time consuming. I'll make too long of a video. But here's what you do. The first thing you do, you clean off that crankshaft and everything in the seal. And then you are going to put some anises on the crankshaft or inside the housings of the uh, pulley and PTO clutch. Now, if you don't have anises, you can use whatever you got. Some lithium grease. Make sure your key is in this one too. The key is welded into the PTO clutch. So now I don't have some anesthes, but what I have is awesome too. That is some high temp disc disc brake wheel bearing grease. This stuff is very tacky. It will definitely do the job. That way you don't have a problem in the future, whoever does it, of uh, removing these again. Okay. So you got your crank pulley, long side up, key in, put your belt on then, and then you can put your spring on, after the belt's on here, you put your spring back on to tension the belt, and you got your PTO clutch, put it up, this side up, obviously, plug her in, put your bolt and washer in there, tighten it up, torque it down to spec, and uh, 
Yeah, then you put your bracket on, that bracket that I showed you that goes through the side of the frame and hooks into here. That I didn't know about. So you do that and then you're pretty much good. Uh, we'll go from there. All right, got it all put back together. New seals in, grease around the crankshaft, put the pulleys in, clutch, PTO, uh, belts on, everything's tightened. I'm gonna run it around a little bit. I got some cardboard underneath there. Uh, that way we can tell if it's leaking. I'm gonna run it for a good, good amount of time. Uh, always verify your work, you know. So, yeah, looking good. All right, we got her done. Took a little while. Takes a takes a considerable amount of time to film while you're doing a job, especially like that where you're underneath a tractor, you know. So uh, we're gonna run to 325 a little bit longer. I got some cardboard underneath to see if that seal's leaking anymore, but it should be good. And we got a new one in there. Everything's put back together, and uh, I would like to tell you what we might be working on next and it's a 1979 Chrysler Snowliner. If you don't know what that is, look it up. There's only been about 28,000 of those made. Um, yeah, that'll be new. That'll be fun. Thanks for stopping by. Jake Small Engine Garage. Like and subscribe, please. And uh, until next time, oh, thank you Eliminator Performance for all your help. Appreciate that. Follow Eliminator Performance. Thanks, guys.